Welcome to part seven of the shopping cart build series. In this video, I'm going to go over how you can add totals to your building order as well as discounts. Let's get to it. Just real quick, I'll run through how to do this. So I've got my shopping cart app here, right? And so if I go to my order table, and if we look down here towards the bottom, we can see that we've got this related order details. So that is all of the things that we've made. And the thing to keep in mind with these virtual columns down here that are like these related, uh, these like ref rows things over here, don't think about it like it's just a single value. Think about it like it's the record itself. Like that list is technically a list of the IDs of those records. Like that's actually what's stored there. Yeah, fair enough. But don't think about it like that. Think about it more in the sense of these are literally all those records. So every piece of data that's in those columns for those records is inside that list. Like that one little thing is all of that. So all of the list that you got down there, the total quantity, the quantity, the total price, like all of those columns, they're all in that list. You just got to get in there and get it right. That's where the list dereference thing comes into play. So what do we do? Create a new virtual column, call it something else later, name it later, come down here and add in your related, whatever, whatever you call it. Right. And then we're going to do a list dereference. So we need to go get the name of our column. I'll do it on the data Explorer. So what we're really trying to say is go to these columns, go to these. And I want to know, the total of all of these. So I'm going to insert that. And so now this little formula bit that we've got up here, it's called a list dereference. And what this does is it says, cool, go to the, all of the records that are inside this list for this order that we're looking at of all of its order details and give me all of the quantity values. And then this thing, this formula bit, right? Turns into that list. So this is now a list of all of the quantities from our corresponding related order details. And then we want to find out the total. We just wrap this in a sum. And with that, we got our order total. I can't believe I didn't add this in to be getting to, to in the first place. Like this blows my mind that I skipped over this. <laughs> We're like, this is an order total. And then I'll change this to a price, right? We'll do it like that, do it like that, do it like that. And when this comes back, we should have a new thing. If we go and look at my building order, here's my order total. Booyah. And like, I'll move that to the top of this detail page. I'll come over here, find it in my list and like, We'll put it all the way at the top. Why not? All right. And you know, I could even do something like this. Maybe I kind of like that. And you, all right. So here's another thing that you could do. So earlier in the stream, I was talking about it's you, a very common thing that I'll do is I'll create a display thing that will take other fields that are inside the system and concatenate them together with some text to make something that looks nicer. That's what I want to do for this right now. I don't just want to show that price up here. I want to put the word total in front of it with a colon, a space, and then the price. So I come over here to my orders. So I have my order total, right? So I could leave this here. Actually, I'm going to leave this here because I want to be able to operate on the order total column itself. Uh, so I'll make a new virtual column and this is going to be a giant concatenate, right? And so what do I want? I want the word total colon and the space. You always got to include the space. It's one of the things that a lot of people will, will skip over is like they forget that they have to put every little bit inside this thing that you're building. And so like, yeah, anyways, common mistake, make sure you add all the spaces and formula in the, in padding and everything else that you want. So, and then I drop in order total. 
And now this, wait for it, yep, here we go. It's text, I'll be happy with that. And I'll call this order total display. Like I'll do this where like only in the form. And we can show that one there. Or no, not in the form, sorry. Not in the form, that one. If I save this, so it propagates. And now we can come up here and we need to change our little thing up here, our title section. So if we go to this view, instead of the order total, the order total display. Okay, now you see what it did? It turned my price into a number. Okay, all right. So. I should be able to go back to my text formula. And if I remember right, I'm gonna go look really quick. If I remember right, text, can I turn a price into a text? Sure can, yep. So um, one, of the, one of the common things that you'll find is whenever you take a native data type, number, decimal, price, and you throw it inside a concatenate like this, same thing with dates and times, right? they get weird, <laughs> weird things happened. So that's why AppSheet gave us this text function. Um, and this gives us the ability to basically like make sure that things return the thing that we, in the format that we wanted. They've given us the ability to kind of hard code some of this, especially in the sense of dates, which is really, really helpful. But all I need to do is wrap this total thing in that text and it should give me an actual price looking thing over here now. Boom, I like that better. Okay, now that I've got a nicely implemented total system, what I wanna do now is I wanna include a way to add a discount to my order and maybe a little descriptor of what the discount is. In order to do this, I need to add some columns to my order table itself. Let's do that now. So in my orders table, I need to add in two columns, order discount and then order discount label, because that's what I want to call the discount if there is one. For to save, go back to my orders table and grab the new columns. Okay, now we go make sure that these are the appropriate types. Discount is a price, discount label needs to be a text. Save it so it propagates. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make the discount label only visible if it is not blank the order discount. I also want to make the label required if you do that too. Not that one, this one. So that when you say there's a discount, I want you to absolutely have to say, this is the name of this discount. This is what that is. This is the description of it. Something of this nature, right? Um, all right. And then, so now the idea is I've got a discount that's a price and i need to include that inside the formula here for my order total so all i need to do is copy the discount column name go to my total formula and say sum all of the things minus the order discount done problem solved and what I'll do is I actually want to I actually want to change this. I only want to see this inside the form. And context view type equals form and is not blank. Yeah, that's what I want right there. So if we're so only show this if we're in the form and there is a discount. If that's true, show the discount label. But I only wanna see it inside the form because outside of the form, I'm gonna put the label above the discount. Like literally I'm gonna make the name, like the label of this column 
the name of it, right? The display name of this column is literally whatever text you enter in to the label. And then over here on the details, I wanna show that in the upper portion. So I go to this display and like maybe put it right underneath the, the status, yeah. Total display, yeah, oh not total display. Yeah, total display, uh, it'll be up here. No, uh, discount is what I wanted, sorry. That's what I was looking for, discount. So that when I come in here, and I say for this guy, I want to include a discount of five dollars. Then I can say like five dollars, five dollars off. And now I've got here's all that. Or disc. Oh yeah. If I would save, then you'll be able to see what it looks like. Yep. Here we go. $5 off. Actually, what I really want to do then is I want to come down here and for this, I actually want to add the word inside in front of this discount and then in parentheses. Yeah, like that. So that it's like discount and then in parentheses, whatever the label that you said, and it'll put that above the actual discount yeah that's what i want it to show just like this that's what i'm looking for that's nice so now i've got the ability to introduce a discount and i think i want to i really if there is something here i really want that to stand out so i'm going to create a formatting rule for that on the orders where is not blank the discount column if there is a discount, then I want this to highlight. And I want the discount to be highlighted. And I want the total to be highlighted too, because the total has a display, has the discount added to it. And so uh, maybe we'll just do like a tag, you know, like something like this. And be like, hey, check it out. This thing's got a, a special thing on it. Discounted order. Okay, the one thing that I need to do though is uh, I can see over here, right? It's allowing this to go negative. I do not want that at all. So I'm gonna come back to my order, go to my total. And then what I need to do is I need to basically wrap this whole thing in an if, I need to check the value first. So something like if the sum minus the discount is less than zero, then set this to zero. Otherwise do the sum of all of that stuff. Yeah. And so I'll just kind of clean this up a little bit. So this, right, this, make it easier to isolate out each individual bit. Yep, just like that. So if the sum minus the discount is less than zero, then set the total price to zero. Otherwise, do the whole thing. And with that, our total now sits at zero if our discount should ever bring it back below. The next thing that I'd like to include is a conditionally shown subtotal. So if you've included a discount, I first wanna show you what would your order total be without the discount, right? And then the total will include the discount. So in order to do that, I need to add a virtual column into the order. We come into the orders, we come up here. I'm gonna call this order sub total. And this is the original formula that I had in my total. So what I can do is I can just go grab that really quick. Helpful hint, if you've ever started a new virtual column, but you don't have the bits and pieces that you need on your clipboard in order to actually start the, the column, so you're in a situation like this, here's a helpful hint. 
just delete the column go get the thing that you need on your clipboard like i need this formula here okay now just hit the undo button and it will bring back that column that you just deleted and with this it's a really easy way to get back to where you were because you already typed in the name of the column so if you were to just keep moving forward, the workflow you'd have to do would be like, let's make a new virtual column, type in the name again, then go to the formula space and do what you do. This method allows you to just hit the undo button, get right back to where you were. All right. All right, so my, my order subtotal formula is then literally just the sum of all of the order details. And that gives me my, my subtotal for my order. Set this as a price, give it a couple of decimal digits, call it good. Um, come down here to the display name. Come down here to the display name, give it a name of sub subtotal and call it good. The thing I would do now though is just like this discount label is only visible if there is not a discount, I wanna use that same thing for the subtotal. So if there is a discount, show the subtotal column. Otherwise, I don't need to see it because the subtotal is the same thing as the total. And then where I wanna put this is, I wanna put this right above and so i think i'm going to move the total away from this top display so i'll move it out of the header column and what i really want to do is i want to put like all three in a row i want to be like subtotal discount total right just like this making a nice standard grouping that we're all used to seeing inside all of our ever, you know, in every ordering system that's ever been used, this is kind of the standard thing that's ever happened, right? You've got a subtotal, then you've got other things that are added into it, taxes, fees, shipping stuff, whatever, and then a grand total. Now, ours has the exact same thing. If you wanted to add in more elements, if you wanted to add more elements to go into and affect the subtotal, it's just a matter of adding in more fields inside your order table. Maybe you wanted to have a taxes field. So have a taxes field that has a formula inside it that calculates whatever the taxes is for this thing. Maybe you have a fees or a shipping and handling, right? These would be other columns that are a price where you could enter a number, you could have a formula that's looking at other stuff, coming up with numbers, whatever, and then all of those all together go into the total. I'm just gonna leave it here with the discount. It's the same method that you need to use in order to add in all of these other fields. It's the same sort of process. Add the column, include it into the total. That's it. And just like that, we've now got this really nice section over here that shows us the subtotal, a discount if we have it, and the grand total of our order. And that's it. That's how you implement totals and a discount for your order. If you want to review any of the other build videos for this shopping cart series, they're right here. And in the next video, I'm going to go over how you can print your order to a PDF with group by categories. You can find that video here. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the community.